What's up, UFO Garage? We're here with Dave Scott, Dave from Scott. Spaced Out Radio, yeah. man. Uh, <laughs> how you doing today, brother? I'm good, man. Good, man. Suffering good. through a little bit of a cold, but you yeah. know, like I made it through the entire Canadian winter without a cold, <laughs> first time ever. <laughs> and like three days before I come down to UFO Con. My son gets sick at school. Oh, and no. And decides to pass it on to me. Oh, <laughs> so man. So it, it's like, come <laughs> on. Like, the timing couldn't be worse. But, right, right. But, you know, I guess that's just the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> yep, but, yep. Nothing like coming to sunny California with a cold. <laughs> like, yeah. that. my goodness. I left home at 3.10 in the morning on Wednesday to catch a flight. I had to drive to Vancouver. And when I left home, it was minus 18 degrees Celsius. So that's about minus 12 Fahrenheit. Jeez, and, dude. No. And I'm like, oh, this is cold, man. This is <laughs> yeah. cold. I didn't like that. Yeah. I didn't like that dude, at all. But that is gnarly. I, is I, I think the only time I've ever experienced a cold like that, uh, I come from like a military family. And so we used to live in Germany. And holy crap, like like so much snow like i've never seen that much snow ever like anywhere else in my entire life and then we like you know lived in texas our whole life and and man you know you just kind of develop that all right once it gets to about like in the 50s okay now it's cold like for us oh, you know man. what i'm saying like <laughs> i'm in a t-shirt man <laughs> it's if ridiculous. it's in the 50s i'm in a t-shirt yeah. And shorts. yeah 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 <laughs> uh anything after that but like i'm one of those people though i would prefer it to be over 100 degrees than like freezing cold any day of the week like this is perfect this is awesome. yeah I, I'm, I'm digging this weather for and sure. i'm sweating yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's crazy man that's crazy dude well yeah man so i mean we saw your 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 first speech and then we watched you interview uh kevin day that was awesome man yeah. uh so i guess for you know a lot of people already know you and your show but for those who are maybe just kind of coming into this Tell them who you are and what you do, man. Yeah, I, I host a show called Spaced Out Radio, which runs seven days a week. I host Monday through Friday, and then we have a weekend crew right now of Everett Themer. We're looking for a new Saturday host to kind of take things on and, and, and join our team right now. But, you know, it, it's something that we do out of, out of a love and passion. You know, there's, there's a lot that we're trying to do. You know, we're just not a podcast. We're a live radio show. We're a business. Right. Yeah, that we're we're quite fledgling, but you know we're trying to be able to to bring this message to the masses, you know, because one of the things and God bless Art Bell, you know, I remember when I worked in terrestrial radio, you you'd walk into the studio, and you'd have to go do your your news or your sports or whatever, right, right. <laughs> but inside the newsroom. We actually had Art Bell playing on a different radio station. It's <laughs> awesome. You know, yeah. because, you know and, and one thing that I always say to people, guys, is there's a lot of people doing podcasts and shows out there, whether it's, it's on radio or whether it's on internet radio or podcasts or YouTube or, or whatever. And I always like to remind people, there's only one Art Bell. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> and so many of us who are are trying to cut our teeth into this, and I've been doing this five years now, we're all trying really hard to mark our own niche. We'll never be Art Bell. The biggest yeah. problem that we have in the paranormal industry is the best came first. Right, <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. You know, like in hockey, it took 70 years for the NHL to get Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, That's in, right. It, it took baseball 30 years before Babe Ruth. Mm -hmm. It took boxing literally hundreds of years before Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Right. And yet in radio, when it comes to paranormal radio, especially the best came out of the gate first. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, Never that's thought interesting. of it that way. Yeah, yeah. That's a great perspective and, on and, that. And we're all judged on that. Yeah. And what I always remind people, whether it's our show or whether it's anybody else's show, give them a few weeks, give them a few episodes before you say, Oh, that guy's just trying to be like Art Bell or that woman's trying to be like Art Bell. We're not trying to be like Art Bell. We're trying to be ourselves. Right, right. right and, yeah. and that's how we grow because there's still a lot of disappointed people out there that art is unfortunately passed away and, mm -hmm. you know, when he stopped doing his show. But at the same time, there's a lot of good broadcasts out there. Mm -hmm. And we just have to be able to give those people the support and the opportunity to do it. And if you listen to my show, great. If you don't listen to my show, but you listen to, say, Jimmy Church or, or Connie Willis mm -hmm. or, or Clyde Lewis, right. some of the best out there, fine. That's beautiful. Yeah. Just listen because there's good topics and good people in this field everywhere. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. I think that's super important. Like, you know, make it your own. Be yourself. You you can't be these you know these other you know these other people who are who are great. You know, and uh, I I know that we had had a comment one time where you know I said that you know. I really enjoyed Clyde Lewis. Like I, I loved his show. You know, it was like it was, uh, you know, uh, coast to coast. And then, well, actually, it was it was uh, uh, Clyde Lewis first. You know, Ground Zero, and then Coast to Coast would come on, and I would stay up late just to catch those two shows. And, you know, and and you know, we had a comment that were like, "Oh, you guys are nothing like Clyde Lewis." And it was like, "No, but of that's course that's, you're the not. that's the point. We're not trying <laughs> to be like not. Clyde Lewis. You got to be your own thing. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you got to. Yeah. Everybody gotta be wants you. to throw this copycat." label out there Uh uh-huh when all you're trying to do is be yourself yeah and it's unfair it's a it's obtuse thinking Mm -hmm. yeah and we just have to you know support each other you know like there's too much bitching and moaning in this entire field (laughs) for what there is a lot of like weird politics man (laughs) exactly (laughs) exactly (laughs) it's like you know think about it in a in a retail selection man like you go to the mall how many clothing stores are there there's, you know, the average mall, say 20, 30 <laughs> yeah. in an average mall. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Imagine if you had one mm-hmm. because that's what the paranormal community, you're not Art Bell. You're not George <laughs> Norrie. You're not Art Bell. You're not George Norrie. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. We, I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so just, just sit back and relax and be thankful that there are this many people out there. Yeah. Some better than others. Right, yeah. Who want to get some sort of message out because they feel it's their drive, their ability, their duty to do that. <laughs> he said duty. Duty. <laughs> nice. Duty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, man, yeah. So and, that's, and, our, that's our niche right there. It's just <laughs> it's, <laughs> dumb. It's, it's a little goofy. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. man, yeah. So I, I was looking through, you know, like your show and, like, how it's all set up and Dude, like every single day. That's impressive. Yeah, yeah seriously. That is impressive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and I would assume that's this is like what you do full time, right? Yes. I mean, that's that's just kind of see, that's that's awesome. Yeah. We do we try and do one a week. Occasionally we'll get in two a week, but we still are putting in, you know, fifty plus hours like yeah. at regular jobs, you know, but still trying to do this and, and keep it going on because like you said man it is cool it's really important mm-hmm. and it's it's something that you know you try and just try to get the word out you know absolutely and i can honestly say and i've said this story many times but you know there's always people who are like oh that's bs but god's honest truth if i would have known how much there was for people doing this type of a broadcast i probably never would have done it <laughs> Like when I left terrestrial radio in 2007 and I signed off the air for the final time, I walked away from radio. Right. I didn't know what podcasting was. I had no idea blog, blog talk radio. I, had, I didn't even know up until recently how to put a YouTube video on. Right. I just yeah. didn't know. Like I'm very technically naive. And so where I come from in Canada, the only thing we had for paranormal was coast to coast. Yeah. And so when we started Spaced Out Radio, I remember my friend Johnny Enoch. He was saying, well, we're going to put this on radio. I'm like, well, what radio station is going to pick us up? You just don't walk into a radio station and say, hey, I have a show. And they say, okay, let's put you on the air. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Right? Trust us. It's good. (laughs) Yeah. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah. And then he introduced me to blog talk radio and mixler and all of these these online broadcast forums and i knew nothing about it i knew nothing because when like i said when i walked away from radio i walked away and i've literally had to find my own niche over time but if i would have known there were literally thousands of paranormal podcasts out there i don't know if i would have done it right yeah i right. really don't and I feel like there's more and more recently, like in the past maybe three years, that just oh. kind of blew up. Like there's it does, yeah. there's there's podcast there's like hundreds of podcasts just about Bigfoot, you know, <laughs> like know. cryptids and things, you know. Yeah, it's it's kind of blown up for for sure. It has, yeah. and you know, without putting anybody down, there's too many. There's too many, mm-hmm. and, and what happens when you get too many is you you start to focus on only certain aspects of the research you're interested in. Mm. You're not going after the full 
research because if something doesn't suit your parameters, you're not going to cover it. Mm. And that's what we see is there's so many different podcasts being broken down into segments. Like if you take Bigfoot, mm -hmm. okay, you have the scientific community who believes it's a hominid, believes it's a, you know, a relative of Gigantopithecus. Right. Then you have the spiritual community who believes that it's an interdimensional shapeshifter, much like a lot of indigenous people believe, okay? Yeah. And people who've had strange experiences they can't explain. Then you have the community who says Sasquatch are people too and should be given the right to vote. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I love all, all of those. <laughs> but Well, so do I. Yeah. But do we really need a hundred podcasts of each. Yeah, no, right. no. I, I think I think to play devil's advocate on that would be that there has been like this huge rise in interest of the subject as a whole. Like it's kind of like mm -hmm. like had this new surge of like Absolutely. energy that like so many people have have gotten this interest. And I think a lot of these shows and stuff have started to pop up to kind of fill Absolutely. fill the de the demand. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Yeah. And they'll eventually, I think the you know the, the weaker ones flow. will will yeah. die off. You know. Well, it's what just happens? Kind of we're in a, a time. Yeah. What for happens that to is happen. people get bored. Or they get stuck. Like, I remember, guys, when I was at 10, 12 listeners a night. Right. And that hurt. Right? And I was like, really? Is this worth it? Mm -hmm. and then you see the numbers slowly to 20 to 30 to 50 to 100 creeping up. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where you have to stay focused. A lot of people get frustrated over that. Or they, they don't understand. You know, this thing right here is a powerful thing. And if you don't know how to speak on it, if you don't know how to be comfortable on a microphone, it's very difficult. Yeah. yeah. You know, you get the people who will do the play by play. Well, I'm hold on one second here. I'm just going to take a sip of my coffee. <laughs> gulp, 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 gulp. <sighs> <sighs> that coffee is really, really good. I'm just gonna put my cup down now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't need a play by play. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Abs yeah, no, I just know. just talk. <laughs> like yeah. you guys are very natural. You know, I've been watching what you guys are doing, and I'm yeah. always listening, man. Yeah. I'm always listening. I've been listening to what you guys are doing. You guys just come in here, you have fun and you you, you know, you, you just talk and let's yeah. talk about some fun subjects and that's what it needs to be. Like you guys, you don't care <laughs> right. well, about what the subject matter is. Let's just talk. Let's yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. You know, We're just and, very so curious many people, people. So many people, you know, uh, Bigfoot's a big hairy monkey and, you know, or you get a lot of the paranormal podcasts out there. What kind of equipment do you use? <laughs> oh, you use that? Right, yeah, right. I stopped using that about six years ago because, uh -huh. you know, I heard from a friend of a friend of a friend who says that doesn't work properly, and huh. I believed what they said, so I can't believe you're still using that after right, all this. Right, right. Like, <laughs> What? F off. <laughs> you know, it, I think right? I think one thing that helps us out a lot too is the fact that we're not trying to bestow knowledge upon you. We're not trying to tell you like exactly. what we know and what we think. We're we're we want to learn. If you have something to say, we want to learn about it, and we want exactly. to that to translate to the listeners. Like you learn along with us at the same time, you mm -hmm. know. And that's that's kind of like our goal. It's it's not to teach you. It's to have you learn. At exactly. the same time as we are. I have a slogan for Spaced Out Radio. It is, we believe everybody. And the reason why we do that is, I've never sat in your shoes. I've never stood in your shoes. Okay? So who am I to sit there and say that your experience is wrong? Your experience is a right. lie. Right, right. You know, I've had things happen to me, man, that I can't explain. They are completely different than what everybody else has reported. Does that mean I'm wrong with what I saw? I don't think so. Right, right. I don't mm -hmm. think my eyes are lying to me. Right. Yeah. Right? It's your experience. I, I Absolutely. Wanna, yeah, if you're comfortable with sharing, would you like to share? Could you yeah. share your, yeah. your experience that, that so, you, you experienced? Uh, I know you have this little friend. Carl. Carl, yes, right? Yes, I want to know about so, Carl. So how did, did, is this something that happened at the studio, or is this something that happened okay. at your house? Or uh, Do you want the long version or the short version? Give me the Let's long version, the man. Long version. All, All right. right. All yeah. right. So I'm somebody I always have my outdoor lights on. Mm -hmm. And this happened at my previous home. And for some reason that week, I just was always forgetting to turn my outdoor lights on. And I lived in a subdivision. I had a rancher-style house. 
So, you know, all the fronts look the same. They have the big bay window for the living room, yeah. then the front door, then a bedroom, and then the garage door, right? That's pretty much what it is. Mm -hmm. And we had moved my daughter downstairs into a brand new bedroom that we built for her. And I kind of converted her old bedroom into my first pseudo radio studio. Right on, yeah. And about three nights of not turning my outside lights on. Uh, actually, let me preface this first. We always have one of those houses back then where all of our friends could come over at any time. They all knew our code to our garage door. Just nice. Knew that our, you know, just text a message and front door will be unlocked. Like, yeah. I wanted one of those community homes oh, absolutely. for all yeah. my buddies. You know, that's cool. Yeah, mainly that's because I hated going out. <laughs> yeah, right? yes. If you come over the, to yeah, my just house, come on over. Yeah. Come on over. Yeah. The, beer is always, the beer is always cold and the coffee's always on. Yeah. yeah. Right? And so we ended up, uh, you know, just always having people over. So it was not out of the realm of possibility for somebody to come over at like 9 30, 10, 10 30, 11 at night. Mm -hmm. And I'm a night owl, so I don't care. Right. I usually go to bed around 1 32 o'clock every morning. Yeah. And, <coughs> excuse me, and so um, on this particular night, it was April 20th, 2015, so yeah, of course, uh, 420, 420, everybody's going to be like, <laughs> nice. what were you smoking, Dave? I don't smoke pot. Okay, yes, I come from Canada, I'm one of the only ones who doesn't smoke pot, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and so, all of a sudden... It's about 10.17. This is only when I had a two-hour show. I was interviewing a guy named uh, Harvey Kraft, and we were talking Buddha of all topics. Cool. And out of the corner of my eye, so if I'm facing here, so if I'm facing the camera, that's where my computer screen is, and the window would be to my left about three, four feet. And out of the corner of my eye, I see something move out the window. And so... My first inclination is, oh crap, somebody's come over. They're going to come ring the doorbell or knock on the front door. And my dogs are going to bark. <laughs> and at that time, I had a little chihuahua dachshund yeah. where if there was a knock at the door, that was the equivalent of about 25 <laughs> minutes of barking. Yes. yes. I'd, okay. I'm very familiar with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so here I am thinking, crap, you know, like it's a thin wall in between in between the room and the and the front door and the hallway area there and I'm thinking crap this is going to be a lot of noise a lot of noise yeah and there's no knock at the door there's no dogs barking Ooh. so Ooh. I get up and I only had probably three or four friends that knew I was actually doing the radio show at that time my parents didn't even know I was doing this right yeah <laughs> yeah and, nice and so here I am Broadcasting, and I'd swivel my chair and look out the window to see who is there. And I look, and on the other side of the window, there is this big gray head with giant black eyes staring back at me out of the corner of the window. <laughs> and I looked at it, and I went, oh, shit. And I, and I jumped back. Thank God my microphone was on mute, right? I fell back in my chair I immediately got up jumped up and like it's only one and a half steps to the window all right looked out the window this thing was gone like completely Whoa. gone yes Dang. all right and if it was a human I would have seen them go down my driveway and I didn't have a long driveway. Yeah. I would have seen them by my vehicle. I would have seen them on my front yard or running away or uh -huh. going to the front of my house, something. In the meantime, in my headphones, Harvey Kraft is, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> boo to this, boo to that. This is how I got into yeah. it. Knows nothing about what is going on. Whoa. Right? So I come back on, or I text my wife first, and I said, alien at the window, get in here now. <laughs> my wife is very empathic. Oh, wow. So she comes in, and Harvey's still chatting, still chatting. And she's putting her hands up, and her hands immediately, my wife always has cold hands, and her hands are immediately burning, totally picking up on the energy. Whoa. And, and so she immediately runs to the kitchen, grabs the sage, and she's... And the Palo Santo wood, and she's going around the <laughs> yeah. house and all this shit. A few hallelujahs, you know, and going from there. Yeah. And... Wow. Yeah. Dang. 
So, I, have you? Uh, is this the first kind of encounter or experience or weird that kind of thing was, that you? No. No. Oh, okay. No. So this is the first time that you saw Carl. That's the first time I saw Carl. Now Carl did come back. Okay. It took two years. October twenty seventh, twenty seventeen. I was interviewing Olaf Phillips, and we were talking secret space program. Mm-hmm. And by the way, you guys got to get Olaf Phillips on your show. Okay. Yeah. Great deal. Awesome. Us, man. He's actually going to come here tonight. Oh, oh awesome. awesome. Sweet. Yeah. So yeah. I'll make sure I introduce you guys. Absolutely. To Perfect. That'd be cool. And uh, one of the great guys in this field. And anyways, Olaf is uh, is uh, um, hanging out, and, and we're doing our thing on the show. And all of a sudden, like... For people who've had the experience, what happens to you is immediately you recognize the energy that follows with it. So, for instance, you know, ghost people, they'll always know when a ghost is around. And you're like, how do you tell? They'll be like, I just know. Or they'll say, I can feel it. Right. Right. Okay. And that's exactly what happens, except with extraterrestrials. Yeah. Okay, exact same thing. I believe So it. here I am bro- broadcasting. It's about 11.35 Pacific time. And we only got like 25 minutes left in the show. And all of a sudden, I get hit with this energy. And I know it's Carl. Damn. I know cool. it's Carl. And, and so Olaf's chatting away. I cut Olaf off. I said, Olaf, Carl's back. Oh. On the air, you can hear this, dude. And he's like, "What?" I said, "Carl's back." He's like, "Was he at your window?" And I'm like, "No, I can feel him. He is here. This is the first time I have felt him in two years. Wow, he is here." And so we end up, you know, talking about this the entire shit, the rest of the show. And I'm like, "I got to sign off. I got to go look for this." Right. So I go outside. And I broadcast out of my home. I got this beautiful studio. I'm in my new house now. Nice. And uh, and you got to realize I, I live about 250 miles from where my first incident with Carl happened. Okay. Oh, whoa. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I go outside and I've I live on about a half acre, and my driveway is about a quarter acre long. And uh, I got these big, long, tall, like 60, 70, 80 foot trees in my front yard. And then my driveway kind of goes flat, and then it tears down a little bit. And in the back of my house is my carport. Right. And so I walk through my carport. Both my vehicles are parked outside of the carport facing my backyard. And I watch these, uh, best way I could describe them, these like Nike swooshes that are like in a yin and yang position. Okay. Okay. Float in between at about six feet in between my cars. I've got Olaf on my cell phone Whoa, and I'm cool. telling him this. And he's like, are you going to go over there? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I have to. I have to. Whoa. Now, so you now, weren't afraid or? Oh, absolutely. My arsehole was about that. Bad. <laughs> 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 yes. right? But I had to. Yeah. So I walk in between my, I watch this orb as I'm starting to walk towards it. This orb goes, so from, if both my cars are pulled in front facing, this orb goes from rear end of the vehicles to the front and then came back. And I was like, okay, I'm going up there. I yeah. got I to see this. Yeah. So I walk through my carport and I go have a look and of course there's nothing there. Yeah. Sorry, I keep hitting the mic. Oh, You're good. <laughs> and, but the energy is intense. Yeah. Hugely intense. And so I end up you know, saying, Olaf, I got to call my ET guy, a guy named R. Keith Andrews. And I said, I need to talk to him. So I got to let you go. So he's like, no problem. Just keep me in touch. So I hang up with him. And I'm starting to get scared. Okay? Because, like... Rightfully so. Yeah. yeah. This, this is just... It's an uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. So what I do is I go back in my house, run upstairs, and above my carport, I have a patio. And I go stand on my patio. And I get Keith on the phone, just happens a couple minutes late before I called, just happened to wake up for Whoa. no reason. Oh, it's like, man. now it's about 1230 at night. Yeah. Wakes up for no reason. I said, Keith, Carl's back. And he's like, really? Oh, pardon me. I got to reverse that for a second. So as I'm standing on my patio, do you remember the movie Signs? Uh huh. Yeah. Remember, remember where the kid crawls on top of the car with the, with the uh, the baby monitor, and he start. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. So, 
I start hearing in my yard. No! What, from, from my backyard <laughs> up to my trees. So I have this conversation. I'm listening to this conversation of from my front yard in my back. And they're talking. Whoa! Okay. So I call up Keith. Now I'm crapping bricks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I call up Keith. I'm like, Keith, Carl's back. And, and out of the blue, Keith says, okay, I'm tuning in. Yeah, I feel him there. He's not alone. He's got some buddies with him. He goes, just out of curiosity, have you heard any sounds? I didn't mention it, Keith. Just out of the blue, he says, have you heard any sounds? And I said, well, there's this conversation going on. Of, and he goes, does it sound more like this? And he did something with his throat. And I'm like, that's it. Whoa. What? And he's like, and as soon as I said, that's it, in my backyard, it's, right? I'm like, you got to be kidding me right now. Oh, dude. You, you totally got to be kidding me. <laughs> so here I am standing, looking into my backyard. And Keith is like, can you see them? I'm like, no. And he's like, he goes, look behind your tree. Keith has never been to my house. He goes, look behind your tree. So I'm moving. And my cherry tree is still quite full as it gets ready for winter to lose its leaves and everything. And I still can't see anything. Right? And he's like, oh, they're there. Right? And then I look up my driveway and I'm trying to find the tree where the other guy is. Right? Right? And, you know, you see things out of your corner of your eye of movement. You turn uh-huh. and look, and there's yeah. nothing there. And you're yep. like, oh, right? dude. And, and so this went on for about 20, 25 minutes. So they're just playing hide-and-go-seek in your yard. Yeah. Like, but here's the thing I noticed, because this is now the second time this has happened to me. Huh. Okay. When they want to get away, they call you to a different area. Huh. So all of a sudden I had this urge to go down I got a lake about two miles from my house Mm -hmm. and it's got to pull in you know and and the message that I was getting was hey go there go to the lake you're going to see our craft you're going to see other aliens there get your ass there now so me being the typical Canadian what I do is I will figure well if I'm leaving my house at one o'clock in the morning I'm going to Tim Hortons first (laughs) right so I drive 10 minutes into town Grab myself a donut and a, <laughs> and a Tim Hortons ice cap. <laughs> it's, it's getting snacks for and the then, show, man. And then I drive back, but I can still feel the energy. Yeah. And then I drive past my house, go to the lake, to the to the parking area <laughs> in the lake, and of course I'm sitting there for like half an hour, and there's nothing. Oh. Go back to my yard, there's nothing. Dang. So I think that's an escape mechanism right. that they Interesting. use. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, like I said, that's the second time I've had that happen to me. Wow. But that's the legend of Carl. Oh, and it's and, awesome, man. And he just it's needed amazing. a name. And and Carl's the first thing that popped into my head. Now, psychically speaking, I have heard from a number of psychics who say that they have connected with him. And I'll never talk about this on air. But they will actually say that Carl really doesn't like the name Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh my God, that's insane. He's sitting there, like, kind of pissed about that yeah. name. <laughs> oh man! Out of, out of all the names, you chose Carl. So, what is your what does your buddy say that the the sound is? What does he think he that says it's that's just, just communication the, the way, or the way they orally talk? Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's interesting because yeah, the 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 orally usually it's it's te- telepathy yeah. that you hear about the the audi- mm-hmm. you never really hear about uh, like what they yeah. sound audibly. Well, don't or, forget, there's different species too, right, and right. they all yeah. communicate right. different. Yeah, right? yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, am I happy about it? Absolutely, man. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. That's incredible, man. Yeah. yeah. That's a cool... I mean, you know, but here's the thing, guys. A lot of people don't believe that story. Number one, because I'm in the media. Number two, because there is no proof. Right. Okay? Right. There is no um, photographs. There is no audio recording. There is no video recording. There's nothing. And the first question I always get asked by people is, well, you have an iPhone. Why didn't you just record it? And I may talk about my experiences. I I don't think I brag about them, but I talk about them. And I want people to take me seriously, but you got to trust my word. Mm, Right. My experiences for me have been for me. I am not a researcher, okay? I don't care about going into the 
going into uh, a field or, or on a UFO watch or into a paranormal investigation or the forest looking for Bigfoot. I don't care about carrying a camera. Right. I am there for myself. It sounds very selfish, but I'm not a researcher. I'm an experiencer who yeah. just wants to take it all in. Absolutely. I don't need the photo because I already know what happened. Yeah. I don't need... I mean, is it nice? Like, there's been times, yeah, where I've said, damn it, I wish I would have taken a picture of that. Right, right. Yeah. But also right. in the moment, I mean, it's kind of the last thing you're thinking about exactly. is your phone. Yeah, Absolutely. You, know? you never like, know. The moment you look down, it could be gone when you look back up. Exactly. You're so. wasting time by fiddling with your phone. <laughs> yeah, And absolutely. you're so, and, you know, absorbed with what's happening. Yeah, absolutely. And, you're, and you're probably yeah, so man. shaken by adrenaline, you, you would get a blurry photo anyway, <laughs> yeah. you know? No, and it, people and would complain right. about your <laughs> shitty photo. Exactly. So you can't win. You know? Yeah. So I just, I just let it. I just want it for me, man. Yeah, absolutely. You know, man. and I don't think there is anything wrong with that. You know, a lot of people in this field have problems with it. I don't. You know, I still want to be old school, where I can trust someone's word that they're not going to bullshit me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I'm not going to BS you guys on my story. I'm not going to BS your audience. I'm not going to BS my audience. Right. right. My audience continues to grow, and. I think that's because they feel I am a voice of reason that they can trust. Yeah. And as long as you don't break that code and break that trust, people are going to take your word. And it's not about trying to steer people in a different direction mm-hmm. or, or make them think like you are thinking. It's about just being honest. Like, what's mm-hmm. wrong with just being honest? Right. Yeah. Right. And this field is filled with dishonesty because... People want that 15 minutes of fame. Right. They right. want their story told. Oh, did you hear about Joe Smith who, you know, had four alien Im- implants up his ass? Right. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's proud to talk about it. <laughs> right? I mean, but there is all of these people out there. You know, in research land, we have all of these people who say they're conducting scientific experimentation when really they're only conducting opinion. Mm. Mm-hmm. To prove or disprove their opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you yeah. know that they haven't done anything scientific since high school. <laughs> right. Paranormal right, yeah. is the exact same way. Uh-huh. Like, I literally stop. I literally, like, when I bring on a paranormal team now to talk about ghosts or whatever, I will literally say to them, if you use the word sci- science, our interview is over. Uh-huh. Because nothing you do is scientific. <laughs> Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> you have no laboratory. You have no control. Using technology is not scientific. Right. Yeah. You're, just, you're just a camera crew. There's a exactly. difference. That's all yeah. it is. Exactly. Uh, uh-huh. and, and, you know, when I, I've been blessed enough, guys, where I have people that I can talk to who have scientific backgrounds. Dude, I was the dumbest guy in science. I, it, it just never clicked in for me. Right, right. So... I'm lucky enough where I have been able to develop relationships with real scientists, with PhDs, with doctorates, who I can go to them at any time and say, hey, what do you think of this? Right. How right. does this work? Yeah. And that's where I get my, my information from. Whereas if you look at the investigation between people lying about science when they're conducting opinion, when you look at all these people out there who are saying they're, they're journalists or investigative journalists, but they've never worked for a news outlet or done anything freelance. You know, I'm sorry, people, you may not like this, but writing a blog or doing a vlog on YouTube right. is not journalism. Mm-hmm. Okay? Learn the craft. But everybody is looking for that upper hand so they can speak at a conference, get that appearance on a television show or a documentary or a movie. Mm-hmm or write a book or something along those lines because the unfortunate part about this business, there is no education. There is no training. And yeah, absolutely. There's definitely not. Absolutely. I mean, I I feel like there's a big difference between a UFO researcher and a UFO enthusiast. I think you you had, you had touched on that a little bit in your, in your uh, talk as well. Like I really appreciate that because we were kind of in the, in the, um, the same kind of conversation. Like, are we, are we researchers? I mean, we have a podcast. I mean, but we're not really. We're like desk we're, chair. We read stuff and we and do listen research. listen to people's stories, but I don't right? I think we're researchers. I don't know. You I know, mean, we're enthusiastic about we're just, what we we're do. We're just two dudes interested 
interested in the subject. Yeah, and we like to talk about it. And we like to talk <laughs> so about you got to get you got to get a better beard, man. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> working on it. You got to get a better beard. No offense. Uh, he says his looks more like a like a Brillo pad if he grows it out. Though. Yeah, you can see straight through thin. when you do it. So. <laughs> I, hear, I hear you. No, but you're right. And and the problem is, uh, and, and it was funny because I was just talking to Kevin Day and Chris Bledsoe about this. We have to, as a community, stop bullshitting each other. I hope I can say that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay, yeah. We need to stop bullshitting each other. Stop trying to raise your own profile by lying about your resume. Because, like I say with a lot of the... And I'm going to take it from a journalism standpoint, okay? I can prove my con- credentials. I right. can tell you which radio stations I worked at. You could go online and look those up. I mean, hell, just a couple weeks ago, I had the dean of broadcast journalism, the dean that I had under me or above me, okay, on my show as a guest. <laughs> That's awesome. Right? So nice. I can prove that, yeah. that I worked in the field, worked in the industry, you know? But a lot for anybody out there watching this, whether you're 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 a writer and you're calling yourself a, an investigative journalist, but you have no journalism. If you're calling yourself a scientist, look at that, Michael Schrat. Michael Schrat. I am Mike? totally fangirling right now. <laughs> How you doing, my friend? Hey, how's it going, man? How you doing, man? Nice to meet you. Hey, I'm there. Michael nice Schrat. Nice I, I know you can't see him on camera. Yeah. Michael Schrat, in my opinion, is yeah, the number <laughs> one aircraft. UFO historian out there the number one and we are so blessed to have a gentleman like this I totally fangirl over him like I uh, I get like honestly you you are one of the best and and you know the 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 fact that we actually get to be in your presence with your hard work honestly that no no that that's just uh, being way too honest and candid there that's but a researcher thank you michael i'll chat with you later i love michael schrat yeah if yeah. anybody has the uh, has the uh chance to go on youtube michael schrat s-c-h-r-a-t-t mm-hmm. please do yourself a favor he's got some great and, stuff and look yeah. him up he is like oh, i'm just yeah, that's yes. Michael yeah. Schrat. <laughs> yeah, like, like Goodall's had nothing but awesome stuff to say yeah. about yeah. it. So yeah. what was I saying before? Oh, yeah, about, about I think it was about the research. Yeah, yeah. Just Okay, yeah. you know, be yourself. Like, if you're out there, stop lying about your credentials. Stop lying about what you're doing or what you're looking for. Stop saying you're conducting scientific experimentation mm-hmm. when you haven't conducted a scientific experiment since grade 10. <laughs> right, okay? right. Get back to being yourself because here's the thing ladies and gentlemen that every mostly everybody forgets in this field except the upper echelons people in that upper echelon that we all want to try and strive to be like okay and that is this do yourself a favor and just be honest because if we can't if or pardon me if you are willing to lie about your credentials and lie about what you do because you've convinced yourself this is the way to go, we cannot trust your research. Mm. So for those out there, uh, once again, because I'm a journalist, I'll pick pick on the journalism crowd out there or the fake journalism crowd. All right? For those out there who are putting on their resume that they're a journalist but they're, they're not, okay, stop. Right? How can we trust your word your research anything that you write if you are willing to lie about your credentials and that's what kills this field guys you talk to anybody in the upper echelon of researchers they will tell you that yeah okay whether it's it's kevin whether it's kevin day whether it's it's michael schratt whether it's grant cameron richard dolan lorian fenton many others there's a huge list right right Excuse me. Blame my son for the cold. <laughs> all right? But, but that is something that we all need to strive for. Yeah. And the problem that we have in this community is we have too many people saying, yeah, but she's a nice person. Yeah, but he's a nice guy. Yeah, but that person is really, really good looking. Or, <laughs> yeah, or whatever definitely. it may be. There's always a yeah, but. Let's stop the yabbats. Everybody always talks about how do we fix this community? How do we clean up this community? It's real simple. Stop supporting those who are lying about their credentials. Doesn't matter what field, whether it's UFOs, Bigfoot, 
dog man, mm -hmm. psychic intention, yeah. paranormal ghosts. Mm -hmm. Does not matter, guys. The formula works the same yeah. in every area of research. And when we stop supporting those, whether they have a podcast, a blog, a television show, a conference, when we stop supporting those people, we're all going to be better off. And for you guys being new in this field, you know, sure, some of the names are enticing. They're exciting. But when you look at their credentials, and it's probably something you've never thought of. When you look at their credentials, say, look, okay, this guy says he's a scientist. Where did he go to school? Right, right. Now, if he says, I'm an amateur scientist, we're all amateurs at something. Right. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> yeah. But if he says, I am a scientist, where'd you go to school? Where'd you get your degree? Yeah. Right? If they say they're a journalist, where did he work? Yeah. Because writing a little blog or vlog is not journalism for some internet UFO website or Bigfoot site or paranormal site. That's not right. journalism. You have no clue. What beat did he work? Yeah, just right? try and keep the integrity What's together. Some you know integrity. That's, that's a great word. Yeah, yeah. keep your integrity. Keep the integrity. You, I mean, if you have integrity and you suck, you know, <laughs> like... That's cool. At least you're honest. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And people would Absolutely. probably respect that a lot more. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and I also want to preface this because it's the Canadian in me. I don't want people to think that, you know, I'm trying to put myself or my show on a pedestal above and beyond everybody else's or, or what I am as a journalist above and beyond everybody else. That isn't the case. I just want clean research. When I bring somebody on my show, I want it to be clean. I want it to be true. I want it to be trusted. I don't care what road it goes down, right? All right. That doesn't matter. I want to know where your research goes, but I want to know that your research is prevalent because you've been honest with your credentials. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's great. Mm -hmm. I love that, man. Yeah, yeah. definitely. You got you to gotta keep it, like you said, keep it clean and, and mm -hmm. keep it, you know, honest. You know, honesty is, is going to get you, you know, a lot further, you know, because I mean, especially in, in this community, like you said, there is a lot of, uh, I guess, hacks, for yeah. lack of a better word. Um, but at the same time, you know, you start to see that those people also really get exposed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you kind of make like one little mistake and that's it. Dude. Yeah. Like Absolutely. a lot feel, of people turn on you. I feel like some sometimes it's like you, you turn on that afterburner, some people that don't have the credentials and then they get famous for something like you know, I think we both know who we're talking about, yeah. the, the, the Corey Good thing. You know, yeah. I think there was a lot of controversy, controversy around yeah, there's, that. There's more than yeah. just Corey Good guys. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know one person out there right now who claims to be an investigative journalist, and he went on Twitter slamming somebody. Yeah, this guy doesn't think I'm a journalist. And I, and I went on there and I said, you're not. Right? Yeah. I said, you're not. I said, if you are, I said... Tell me, what, what station did you work at? What paper did you write for? Mm -hmm. What's your credentials? Where did you go to school? What's your background? I can provide mine. What's yours? Shut them right up. Right? Yeah. 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 Shut them right up. But So doing this whole radio thing, man, I know that you, you, know, you were uh, the journalist. Yeah. You, you put in your time. You did your thing. What kind of branched out, like, what, what made you branch out into, like, the, the, you know, the UFO phenomenon, the paranormal? Was yeah, it because of question. your experiences, yes. or is it, you know, just something you were interested in, and then the experience started to happen? No. Uh, when I was, um, started my experiences, my experiences started heavily in December of 2011. Uh-huh. And I didn't start Spaced Out Radio until November 30th, 2014. So literally three years, I was going on the internet, try, watching every ghost show, UFO show, Bigfoot show, any documentary I could find yeah. on cable mm -hmm. to try and figure out what was going on with me. I was going to the bookstores, trying to find anything. Okay, like when I had my Bigfoot experience, you know, trying to figure out what happened there. All right, and was this what other people were seeing? And UFOs, like when I had a black triangle hovering over my house, okay, it, its entire undercarriage was lit up. It wasn't just like three balls that yeah. like you see on every photo. Uh -huh. Yeah. So there were similarities that I was finding online, but not, it was never quite enough 
to say that's my experience. Yeah. And so my good friend Johnny Enoch came up and he's like, dude, we got to get you back on the radio. And I'm like, no, dude, I'm not going back on the radio, you know, not doing that. And he's like, but the more I thought about it, the more he pressed, the more I thought, you know what, this is a good way for me selfishly to try and get answers to what I'm seeing. Because I could ask questions like, have you ever seen a black triangle that's all lit up? Right, right, right. Right? Dang, that's super fun. It sounds yeah, like yeah. really fun trying to get to the bottom of it. And, yeah, and I mean, that's, that's the best part about what we do is, yeah. is trying fun. to get those answers, yeah. you know, and just it being is. able to talk to people and hear their stories, you know, connecting the similarities, finding the differences, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. wow, that story yeah. sounds very similar, but this one huge difference is very interesting, you yeah. know, and, and that's, yeah. that's super cool. I love right. that. Yeah. And that, I think you hit it right on the head there. Where all there's always that one big difference. Yeah, yeah. Nothing is ever the same. So, like for instance, the, the ETs that I have seen, people have seen something similar, but they haven't seen what I have seen. Right, right, right. And that's that's what I don't understand. That's the thrill of trying to figure out what is going on. Yeah. Right. And yeah. this is why we can't shoot down people's experiences. Right. It's too easy to try and debunk somebody. Because how do we debunk in the paranormal? I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah, that's all you have to do. It's, it, it is easy. Yeah. You're exactly right. Yeah. You're yeah. exactly right. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's kind of it's kinda nice to see that there's a lot of people who still do that, but it really seems like the tide is, tra- yeah. is starting to change. And it's kind of like, all right, so there's all these people who are having these experiences. At what point are uh, all these people officially crazy? Or lying, mm-hmm. you know, and it's kind of hard to, you know, discount that. It's like, well, there's a lot. There's a whole lot, and they can't all be. Okay, you know. we always want to put people down. In the internet age, we don't want to take people's word anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, especially with social media. What's wrong with changing that focus and believing it? Why are we not allowed to do that, guys? Yeah, absolutely. Right. What, what's wrong with saying to somebody and looking them in the eye because they've had something traumatic happen and they feel the need that they need to reach out to you and tell you their story? Yeah. What's wrong with being able to say to that person, I believe you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right? It's like walking up, you know, and I'm not trying to be all profound here, okay? But it's like walking up to a stranger on a sidewalk and just saying, good morning. <laughs> Maybe that sets. Maybe they've had a shitty day. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe you know that that woman that you that you just said good morning to, you know, maybe her child just died in hospital, or her husband left her for another woman, and now and she's homeless, or whatever. Right. Like you just don't know what a person is going through. Yeah. And 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 I realize it sounds like an extreme example, but when it comes to this field, it's very similar, because there's a lot of people out there who are. Who are do you know committing suicide, losing friends? Absolutely. Who are you know because they don't want the ET contact to continue? Mm-hmm. I have two listeners that I know of that literally were about to commit suicide until they heard the show wow. to learn that they weren't alone. Wow! And they reached out to me, and it literally it brought tears to my eyes. Yeah, it's powerful right? stuff, man. Right? Not you know because you don't when you're when you're putting on a, a nightly show. You don't think about that. Mm-hmm. You really don't. All you're thinking about is, okay, what can I get out of my guests? You're not realizing the impact you're having on your listener. Mm-hmm. And when you realize that they have, they have a bond with you and they've, they trust your word and that you're not going to lead them astray, mm-hmm. and then you tell them that you believe them, it's very powerful. Yeah. You know? Yes. And what's wrong with believing people? Just because your research doesn't show or your photographs don't match up or your video doesn't match up, who cares? Absolutely. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, we're, we've recently started to kind of uh, find that out ourselves, like mm-hmm. that connection that you have between the listeners and what it is that you're doing. You know, we get like these awesome, like, you know, just letters and, and, and messages and it's like, wow. That's really awesome mm-hmm. that you were able to like connect with somebody on mm-hmm. on that level for them to care enough to reach out Absolutely. to you and talk to you. Absolutely, but what did it cost you? 
Nothing, man. Just a, a no. couple minutes of our time yeah. of, of stuff exactly. that we enjoy doing anyways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. and yeah, yeah. It's really been fun to, to see that grow. Like, yeah, it's absolutely. really been fun to be a part of. But it didn't cost you anything to be human. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. And there yeah. are people out there, guys, whether they're at this conference or whether they are just sitting at home because they've had some horrible alien experiences and they're afraid of the world. Okay. Yeah. What's wrong with telling them, I believe you? This may have caught... Guys, I, I think I'm, I'm a pretty good guy. <coughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. I'm not trying to scare you with my cough. Oh, no. Don't I worry. Sc- it's not I coronavirus. <laughs> um, but what, what is wrong with telling someone that you believe them? What is wrong with saying, you know what? I don't think you're psycho. I don't think you're lying. I believe you in what happened. Because there's a lot of people who have lost friends, mm-hmm. family. I know. I... Because of my experiences, I lost my best friend of 28 years. Yeah. Turned on me. This is a guy I supported, right? Yeah. Right. Through a lot of shit. All right? And when I needed him, I got the screw you. Right? That sucks. That sucks I haven't talked to him in three years. Apparently, he's getting married this weekend. Oh, Jeez, yeah. Right? Dude. Or this in a week from now. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know that I know. But, <laughs> oh. you know. That's heavy. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to be his best man. Right. I'm the guy who introduced him to his wife. Wow. Oh, or wow. his future wife. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But is what it is. Uh-huh. I can't do anything about it. Because my choice of lifestyle in wanting to learn about my experience was more important. And right. he didn't want to come on that journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot of people out there. So the powerful words of I believe you. Look, we're all smart enough to see through bullshit. Yeah. All right. I remember I had a guest on, oh, about three and a half years ago, who was trying to say that he was being protected by men in black. And, like, all of a sudden it was like he was reading out of a comic book. <laughs> yeah. Right? As my job as host, you know, a lot of people, well, why didn't you cut him off? Everybody wants to cut everybody off these days. No. Let him make an ass out of himself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And dig his own grave. This isn't for me to do. I bring the people on. I try and vet the people as best as I can. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. And my team tries to. But in the end, the person's going to make or break themselves. It's up to the audience to choose whether or not you believe them. It's not mm-hmm. my choice. Right, mm-hmm. right. I just try and bring the credibility. And sometimes you fail. Yeah, sometimes you, you, you can't fail. Always, you can't always, you know. Yeah. yeah. Can, can I, always had be, one, huh? I had one gentleman on who... About halfway through the show, started wanting to uh, talk about these magic staffs that he was created and selling for $2,100 Canadian. Whoa. <laughs> magic staffs? Yeah, and that everybody should have a magic staff. And he started making it into an infomercial. Oh, on your show? On my show. Oh. So <laughs> finally, I, thank <laughs> that God. pissed me off, kinda. Thank God I only had the guy booked for two hours, not three. <laughs> Okay, Okay. but I came back on the air, and I said, and I apologized to my listeners. And I said, you know, this, I, I apologize. He stopped answering my questions, you know, and he went into full infomercial about this staff. I said, I do not. I said, I do not condone buying this. I know nothing about this. Please, $2,100 for a lot of you is more than your monthly income. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, stay away. Yeah. All right. Or if you choose to, that you want to do it, but I am not endorsing this product. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. And that honesty is what you need to do. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Do I yeah. know if it works? No. <laughs> but you don't turn my interview into an infomercial. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it just yeah. starts just selling a whole bunch of crap that you're making. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. No. I mean, uh, I'd, I'd try out the magic staff for sure. I'd want to see I what mean, it's about. I mean, if he sends you one, I don't, right? I don't think If he sends you one and you're like, <laughs> yeah. okay, yeah. we'll try this out yeah. live, you know, we'll do well, a, a live stream with the magic staff. That sounds like some good if content. If it works. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm still not telling you to buy it, but it does work. <laughs> it does right? work. Yeah. Or this is a piece of shit, and I use it for hiking. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I just want to know because in my three years since doing that interview, 
or two years, I still haven't seen anybody walking around with a staff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you right now, if I'm walking around with a staff, my beard better be about three feet long. <laughs> yes. My hair must be about another foot longer. Yes. <laughs> and I better be wearing a cape <laughs> and a robe. Oh, man, yes. Uh, somebody comes comes at you like like the wizard game where you finish exactly. a beard and then you <laughs> yeah. tape that beard can until you have the largest staff. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yes, With the beer dude. box on your head. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's That's great, That's just the man. way it goes. That's great, man. Well, that's super interesting, dude. Yeah. Uh, uh, I I think we should leave it there. Yeah. Definitely. I, I love that. What's wrong with believing somebody? Yeah. You know? Saying I think that's I believe a, you. a beautiful way to kind of end that. And, yeah. and just, uh, yeah, there is nothing wrong with believing somebody. Yeah. Do your own, you know, investigating your own research. Come to your own conclusion. At the end of the day, it is up to you on, on how you feel. Um, but don't automatically dismiss people just because the story sounds a little strange um, because it is a little strange and we're all just trying to figure it out. Absolutely. And, and we should have say, because you guys have been telling me the whole time that one of your fans is a fan of mine, Joseph. Oh, yes. yes. Joseph. Yeah. So we we got to give yeah. a show. Joseph, how you doing, brother? Yeah. What's up, I hope man? you have a great time. There is a present for you that these guys have from me. So make sure uh, you have fun with it and enjoy it. Thank you so much for being a listener and to anybody else who – you know, wants to have this, these guys is a great podcast. <laughs> Tune it on in. And hopefully, if you give us a try, maybe we can earn one or two of your listening ears. Yeah. Cool, man. All right. Well, you, you guys yeah, uh, you all finished that up? Awesome. All right, guys. Well, it was good uh, talking to you all again, and we'll catch up with you all in a little bit. Peace. 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 Peace.